Hello and welcome to the World Wanderers Podcast, your source for travel stories, travel destinations, and travel philosophy. I'm Amanda. I'm Ryan. And we're your hosts. Hello, everybody, and welcome back for another episode of the World Wanderers podcast. Today on the podcast, we are going to be continuing our journey through Costa Rica. So if you joined us last week, you heard about the first little bit of our trip to Costa Rica. We took you through the coastal parts that we visited. So we visited Nusara and Santa Teresa. This week on the podcast, we'll be taking you inland to Monteverde, La Fortuna, and Volcan Arenal as well as into San Jose, which is the capital city. Before we dive into that, though, we just wanted to talk a little bit about the World Wanders Insider. Yes, so the World Wanders Insider is a brand new podcast that we're doing, and our first focus is on working and traveling as a digital nomad. So we are doing episodes ourselves and also interviewing guests and doing concise episodes talking about how people have built their income sources and found a way to make work and travel work for them. The World Wanderers Insider is exclusive for members of our community on Patreon. So if you want to find out more, go to patreon.com slash the world wanders where you'll find out about how to join, what the prices are, and what you'll experience with um, the World Wanderers Insider podcast. Yeah. And so last week we gave a little bit of context for our trip to Costa Rica. We talked a little bit about why we decided to go there. And so it started with doing a yoga retreat in Nusara. And then we decided to tag on our honeymoon and then also just to do a little bit of adventuring. So we spent a week in Santa Teresa, mostly offline, just relaxing. And then we headed in inland to Monteverde for three nights. And we booked an Airbnb with no Wi-Fi. It was a little bit of a splurge. It was a super beautiful location. And we, you know, had three nights there as kind of the rest of our honeymoon. But if you listened to last week, you know, we were having a little bit of not car troubles, but we booked a car that was smaller than we felt like we needed for this trip. And so we ended up leaving Santa Teresa a day early, heading to Punta Arenas to trade in our car. And then from there, we were able to head into Monteverde. And one of the reasons we decided to do this is because Monteverde is in the mountains. Costa Rica Rica is not that big in general. It's more long than it is wide. You can get from one coast to the other in just a couple of hours. But In between that is a lot of mountainous area and Monteverde is right in the middle of the mountains and (laughs) the Airbnb host at our place in Santa Teresa had said, oh, you're going to try to go to the mountains with that car. And after already feeling a little bit sketchy ourselves, we were like, okay, we need to make a decision about this because this was the part of the trip that we were honestly most excited about. So we switched in our car, got our four by four with some bigger tires, and we're able to head into the mountains. Do you want to talk a little bit about what Monteverde is like? Yes. So Monteverde is a really interesting place. It's a a small town up in the mountains that is actually one of the, the most popular tourist destinations in Costa Rica. And it's an interesting experience because it's at elevation. And so you kind of quickly drop in temperatures it's at about 1400 meters and i think one of the things we both noticed when we got up there was like oh hey we could put on a sweater which is a bit of a weird experience after you know sweating your whatever off (laughs) at the beach (laughs) like a couple hours earlier but monteverde is really fascinating place and and the drive up there is spectacular we mentioned um about a bit about anxiety driving up there and it turns out uh it's actually all paved now so on our way up, there was a lot of conflicting information about kind of what the road was like, about, yeah, people are working on paving it, but as of the time we drove it, it was actually fine to get up there. The way out of town, which was the other direction, was a, a bit better in, an, in a 4x4, but we actually would have been fine in the car um, going up there. But yeah, it's at 1,400 meters, and so it's this really fascinating landscape where, depending on your angle, you can see all the way down to the ocean. You're way up in the mountains, but it's still so lush and green, and it's actually home to the Monteverde Cloud Forest. And Amanda, do you know what National Geographic has called the Monteverde Monteverde Cloud Forest? I do not. Tell me, Ryan. They call it the jewel in the crown of cloud forest reserves. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I also just want to comment on what you said about the car. So I think we probably would have been okay, but I do not retract my statement from last week's episode where I say 100% get a 4x4. 
Because there was like some For really, sure. we drove through some muddy parts. For there were sure. some steep bits. There were some gravelly, slippery bits. I think a four by four is just necessary if you're going to yeah. drive in Costa and it was, Rica. It was like, I think we would have been fine getting up there and getting to the place we stayed at in our little car. But like even going to the cloud forest, the hanging canopy thing we went to, I don't think, because it was like kind of wet and like really steep hill and kind of mucky. I don't even know if we could have done that in a car. So there's a lot of things we did in that area that we felt like free to do because we had a better vehicle. And if we had the car, we probably wouldn't have taken it anywhere. We would have been a bit more centralized. Yeah, absolutely. And so arriving in Monteverde was pretty amazing. Monteverde is absolutely stunning. When you arrive, you get this beautiful mix of the lush greenery with the blue sky and then some gray clouds around. And then like Ryan mentioned before, from some angles, you can see the ocean. And it's just honestly one of the most stunning places I've ever been. And after, you know, some stress with the car and just feeling a little bit ready for, I guess, like a change in scenery, we were really, really happy to get to Monteverde. Absolutely. Yeah. And we had mentioned in the last episode that part of our Costa Rica trip was a honeymoon of sorts for us, um, which is always funny, I think, as kind of permanent travelers to section off a part of your trip as a vacation. But it really focused on Monteverde. We had booked a really nice place there. It was actually like a honeymoon lodge. And normally, like we're pretty budget conscious. We um, don't treat ourselves to like accommodations like that very often and it was it was a really really cool space with this balcony that looked out that if it was clear enough you could see all the way down from the ocean because it was on the kind of outside of the mountain from Monteverde and so just an amazing space to kind of hang out and spend a few days and the climate as well it was like kind of warm during the day but like a nice little bit of uh, a cool breeze would blow through at night enough that you'd feel like comfy in the sweater so we could hang out and do lots of stuff. And one of the thing that one of the things that makes Monteverde such a great place to be is there's so much to do in that area. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the activities we did? Yeah, absolutely. So we just did a couple of activities. We went to the Monteverde Cloud Forest, which Ryan touched on before. And basically it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a forest in a cloud. And so we went and we paid the entrance fee to get in to use the trail system. And we did a hike and you walk in and it's very, very green. It is very, very humid, but not super, super warm. And the higher you get, the more you feel yourself being in a cloud. So you just feel like there's a lot of moisture in the air. And we got beautiful sort of scenery and views throughout. Everything was very lush. But when we got to the top, we were fully in a cloud, which was pretty funny. So it lived up to its name, at least for us, because by the time we got to the top of the trail, we literally could see nothing except the cloud that we were in. <laughs> yeah. And the wind was blowing so fast, which made you kind of think like, oh, maybe it's worth waiting for a while. But it seemed like the, the clouds were never going to break and you could just see gray either direction. And so another cool kind of interesting fact, once you get up to that top point um, in the cloud forest is actually on the continental divide. So you can pour water on one side of the kind of the, the platform, I suppose. One side goes down to the Pacific, one side goes down to the Atlantic, which is really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And so there are a couple of other, you know, cloud forests and things in that area. So we actually went to the Monteverde cloud forest, but there's also the Santa Elena cloud forest, as well as the children's eternal rainforest. And so those are kind of like the most popular ones there, but we just went to the Monteverde cloud forest reserve. The other thing that we did is we walked the hanging bridges. And so you can go and, you know, they're again, exactly what they sound like, like big sus suspension bridges that are hanging over these really deep valleys and deep gull gullies. And again, a lot of the time we were in a cloud and it was very lush and it had a lot of rainforest vibes and we were able to see many different birds and we saw some monkeys as well on that. So that was pretty cool. And there's lots of stuff you can do kind of around the hanging bridges. Like you can, you can do like a canopy adventure. They also have a couple of adventure parks where you can do zip lining and stuff like that. So if you've heard about Costa Rica being kind of this family friendly adventure tourism area, I feel like a lot of that comes kind of from this area. There are a ton of different things that you can do in that in the Monteverde kind of, I guess, 
area, you could say, because the city center is really small. The city center is like just a couple of streets and then there's all the stuff is kind of outside of the city and kind of surrounding it. And there's adventure parks, hanging bridges, the cloud forest, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, we just chose to do the hanging bridges and then the one cloud forest. And we really, really loved that. And so our time in Monteverde was pretty chill. We would go out, maybe get a coffee, do some type of adventuring, go for a hike, um, come back, hang around at our place, maybe have a drink, play some uh, Monopoly. What's the game? Monopoly Deal? I think it's Monopoly Deal Breaker or something. It's a it's a card version of Monopoly that we've been traveling with and playing. Um, and then go out and for dinner. And we found a number of places that we liked. For such a small town, it had some really solid food options. Um, for coffee in the morning, we went to Cafe Monteverde uh, quite a few times, actually. Really good cafe. They had some really delicious um, treats there as well. For kind of more inexpensive lunch, we actually got some lunch there to go on the way out. We went to Raulitos Pollo Asado. This place, I think, is definitely definitely a must-go when you're there. They do really, really, really tasty chicken and kind of just traditional Costa Rican, like rice and beans um, with a Jamaica juice. And um, really simple stand right by the church, the, the main church in, in um, I think it's like the Santa Elena Catholic Church. And just right beside there, there's a really simple looking stand with um, a jolly gentleman who is just like super friendly and like super nice and fun. And the place is always busy. So Ralitos Pollo Asado definitely gets a big recommendation. And then a place that we considered... I think moving into, uh, <laughs> which is the Taco Taco Taqueria, um, which had really, really tasty Mexican food. I think we went there three, three times. times. <laughs> three times. <laughs> we went there three times. Really um, good tacos, really good elote. The, the elote was really good. Good margaritas. The guac was good. Yeah, really, really good Mexican food. Um, which you always need when you're not in Mexico. And one other place we went was Bon Appetit, which had a, a tasty gluten-free pizza, which we swung and missed on once because they didn't have the dough, apparently. But we went another time and they had it, um, which was really tasty and, and delicious. Yeah, absolutely. And so after our three nights in Monteverde, we headed over to La Fortuna. And La Fortuna is another really popular area to visit. It was an area that was recommended to us by a number of different friends when we were visiting Costa Rica. And La Fortuna is really popular because it's right near Arnal Volcano National Park. It's right by La Fortuna Waterfall. It's right by the volcano. It's right by... Lago RNL and all of that good stuff. So and it's it, not too far from San Jose. Yeah, absolutely. So this was like the perfect spot for us to go as our last stop before San Jose because it was a quick, you know, I think like two and a half or three hour drive to San Jose and only like a three, three and a half hour drive from Monteverde. The only thing is, is that when you look at them on a map, you're like, oh, they're pretty close to each other but you actually have to drive all the way around the lake. So you can either go, there's like a longer way, I think, to avoid some of the mountains. So going back down like you would to San Jose and then back up and around, or you can go around the lake. And we decided to go around the lake. It's a little bit shorter. We knew we had the vehicle for it. And we also felt like it would just be a bit more picturesque. And it definitely was. It was a beautiful curving mountain road. We had no problems with the road. And it just gave us this stunning entrance getting into La Fortuna. Lago Arnel is big, it is beautiful, and as you kind of go around it, you get all these different views of the surrounding areas, and then all of a sudden the volcano popped out of nowhere, and Arnel Volcano is a cone volcano, and so it's kind of like, you know, how kids or how myself would draw a volcano if somebody said, hey, draw a volcano, and it's got clouds that hang out at the top, and it's just really cool and it kind of like watches over the little town there so that's what that was like entering in and we stayed at a small airbnb right in the center of la fortuna la fortuna felt like a little bit bigger than monteverde maybe for sure a little bit more developed more of an actual like town as opposed to kind of like an area that's set up for the surrounding activities i think la fortuna is more popular Definitely. with with tourists for sure i, I think, think also with with locals as well 
yeah, definitely more on the, the, the tourist radar and for good reason, there is a ton of stuff to do there. So we stayed a little bit longer in La Fortuna than we stayed in Monteverde. I think we stayed four nights as opposed to three and we did a ton while we were there. Do you want to talk a little bit about our activities in La Fortuna? Yeah. So, so first of all, we were trying to get back a little bit into working. So we actually went and spent a couple of afternoons, evenings, working at a co-working space there. But outside of that, we were getting out, seeing the site. So we went to a hot springs. There's a couple different options there. We went to the Tabacon hot springs, which was a nice afternoon, um, enjoying a couple different hot pools. You get some good views out there. Um, we went and did a hike at the Arena Volcano National Park. It's a little bit of a not like a, a huge area, but in the national park, there's a couple different hikes. Um, and so we did the Sendero Coladas. Sendero Coladas. And then we went down in the car towards the lake, and there was another walk, which was actually really beautiful as well. Yeah. So just so you guys know, that's called Mirador Lake Ardenel. And so if you want to get really good views of the lake, you can go there. And then you also have really good views of the volcano. And actually, it was kind of in that day on on that side. So it's on a different side than La Fortuna is. That was the first time that we actually saw the volcano with no clouds on it. And I think that the clouds kind of like tend to hang out on one side of the volcano more than the other. So we did a lot of stuff and it was always, the top was always shrouded in cloud. And then we went over to do this hike and to the Mirador for the lake and all of a sudden the clouds were gone and it was pretty beautiful. And so we also went over to the waterfall, La Fortuna waterfall, which is one of the most popular things in the area. And you can really see why it's um, a little bit of a drive out of town. You park And then probably 15 minutes walking down, 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 down a bunch of stairs to get to, it almost has like a bit of a cenote vibe, um, but just a a really incredible waterfall um, and a, a really cool setting. Yeah. And there's a swimming hole at the bottom. Well, there's a couple of different places you can swim. You can swim kind of right below the waterfall, or you can kind of follow the path down a little bit and where the waterfall goes down to the water. We swam in the part that was right under the waterfall and it was cold. It was quite chilly. I feel like it felt really good, but I think that if you've never swam in cold water before, you might be like, what the heck? How am I swimming in such cold water in Costa Rica? I feel like being from Canada, we're pretty used to cold water. So we were fine, but there was a lot more locals and stuff kind of swimming a little bit further down and the water definitely gets a little bit warmer when it's not like, I guess, quite so rough from the impact of the waterfall itself. Yeah, definitely. And so we also went to the Hanging Bridges in La Fortuna. They were más o menos the same as the ones in Monteverde. Obviously, same concept, different views. I'm glad we did do these ones because we got some beautiful views of the valley, the volcano, the lake, all of that sort of stuff. And this area of Costa Rica is stunning. I just feel like the nature in the interior was kind of, out of this world, beautiful, just a lot of greenery, a lot of blue sky, a lot of really, you know, picturesque photographic moments. And it was so nice to be able to just go and, you know, take a little walk around and the hanging bridges in La Fortuna felt a little bit different because it wasn't so much in a cloud forest the the temperature was a little bit different. So it wasn't quite as, I guess, like moisture dense and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we also went to uh, a little area, a little walking trail right in the center of town called Bogarin Trail. And it's a little nature park. And so I actually don't really know the dynamics of like how this little park functions. But you go, you pay the entrance fee, which is really quite uh, reasonable. It's a little bit more expensive to hire a guide. We didn't do that. And I think if we went back, we wouldn't do that again just because of the price. Um, And then you just walk around and can see lots of um, animals, lots of nature, lots of birds. We saw some lizards. And of course, the main attraction, the star of the nature park is the sloths, which are actually a little bit hard to spot. We were kind of cranky in our necks each, you know, every which way trying to find a sloth. But we actually were able to see, I think, two or three. I think two or three. Mm -hmm. Ryan spotted one entirely on his own. The second one we found because other people were looking at it and I think their guide must have found it for them. And then the third one we kind of 
you know, saw while another group of people also saw it. And we were kind of told at the beginning, like, yeah, it's like pretty cheap to just walk around, but you might not see as much stuff because the guides know where everything's kind of hidden and hangs out. So we were lucky in that regard. But we, we talked about this a little bit in the first episode, and I think we'll talk about it a little bit more at the end of this episode. Things in Costa Rica are quite expensive. And for us, there's a massive difference between paying $10 each for a nature trail and $35 each. It's the difference between $20 and $70. And to be quite honest, there's a lot of activities and food that we can consume for $50. US And so for us, we were like, okay, we'll take the risk of not seeing a sloth in order to save a little bit of money. And, you know, fortunately we still saw three of them. So I think it's possible to do that if you are wanting to, you know, see the sloth, but still enjoy the trail and save a bit of money. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is something that I wanted to mention with a lot of the activities in this area, like both between Monteverde and La Fortuna, everything comes with a, a cost, of course, but it is a little bit high, I think. Um, it's, like You, you want to get out and do lots of stuff, but the hanging bridges are $20 getting into the park is $20 going to the waterfall was 20 or $30 um, going to the park again so like kind of each activity and if you want to go and do a bunch of stuff each day that bill kind of can quickly compound up until the point where you've spent you know $100 that day on activities so um, it was something for us as well we were trying to think about like how we could save money here and there when we could. Yeah, absolutely. And this is something we talked with another travel friend about this who traveled Costa Rica at a similar time as us. And, you know, when you're more of an independent travel style like we are, where you're willing to just, you know, rent a car or take a bus and go explore something on your own, sometimes it can feel a little bit frustrating when you still have to pay to do something like that. And, I mean, Costa Rica just has a high price tag on a lot of things. Like when you go to these places, you know, expect to pay an entrance fee to go into the cloud forest and expect to pay an entrance fee to go into the hanging bridges in both Monteverde and La Fortuna. You know, expect to pay an entrance fee into the national park and some of the nature sanctuaries because Bogorin is not the only place where you can go see sloths and birds. There's places where you can go see bats and um, you know, sloth rescue centers and all of these things cost money to, to get into. So like Ryan said, I mean, it can add up quite quickly, even if you're not paying the above and beyond to hire a guide or get transport or something like that. And that's definitely one of the things that I think makes Costa Rica really amazing for, for a lot of, you know, tourists and also really challenging for the tourists that are on maybe more of a tight budget or who want to do things more independently. And so in La Fortuna, we were keep, keeping it pretty, I think, simple when it came to eating. There was a restaurant really close to our Airbnb that we really liked um, called Pollo Fortunado that did like really, really tasty roast chicken with sides and it was like really affordable. I think we ended up eating there three times. You might be noticing a pattern in this episode and just did a lot of eating breakfast and, and lunch at home. But that was a place that we really enjoyed eating at and would definitely recommend if you're in that area. It's definitely one of those towns, you kind of get the impression as you walk around that La Fortuna is the type of town where on Friday, a whole bunch of people flood in from the city um, or maybe you know tour buses flood in from other places. And so there's lots of bars, lots of energy and activity um, as compared to some of the other towns, which maybe seem like a bit more like health conscious, sleepy. La Fortuna seems a bit more of that like party vibe. Yeah. And one other place that I wanted to give a shout out to that we ate at was uh, the Rainforest Cafe. It's not the Rainforest Cafe that you know of in the U.S., don't expect that. It's totally different. No animatronics. Yeah, definitely no animatronics. It's just a cute little cafe in the center of town. And it has, you know, decent breakfast, some good lunch options. And the reason why I'm giving it, it a shout out is because it's got really good patacones. And I mentioned the patacones last episode, but I'll bring them up again because they are a local favorite in Costa Rica, something that Ryan and I both love and something you should definitely try while you're in Costa Rica. They are green plantains that have been boiled and mashed together and put into like the form of a small pancake and then fried. And then in Costa Rica, they serve them with like, um, like a mixed black bean, like a pureed black bean sauce guacamole, a 
and Pico de Gallo, and it is the bomb diggity. It is so good, and Rainforest Cafe had really, really good patacones with those toppings. And some good tasty fruit juices as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's kind of interesting. So I just want to touch quickly on the fact that the trend of eating at the same places over and over again. So we do that in places a lot. It's something where we find a restaurant that we really like, and then we'll go and visit that again. And we've talked about this in our episodes around Mexico. Why don't we want to try new places? Well, it's not that we don't want to try new places. It's just when you know that you love a place, you want to go eat that as much as you can before you leave. In Costa Rica, I felt like it was a little bit different than that. Costa Rica is not known for its food. Costa Rica is known for its nature. And to be quite honest, I thought the food in Costa Rica was pretty good. I thought we ate quite a bit of good food in that three weeks. I was certainly not starved by any means. And I feel like we ate lots of yummy stuff. I mean, that chicken you just mentioned was delicious. That's why we went back, you know, twice more after we went the first time. But I think it's just like we were in a lot of places where there wasn't that many options. There was only a couple of restaurants open while we were in Santa Teresa. And then Monteverde is pretty small. They don't have that many restaurant options. And so, you know, we found a good place that we liked and we're like, let's just go back there again. We know it's good. It has some delicious options and, you know, we're here for it. So just wanted to bring that up in case you were wondering what that was all about or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so La Fortuna was kind of our last destination before the last destination, I guess our penultimate destination, the last one with our car. And so we drove from there towards San Jose. Um, Again, another nice drive. It's driving around the center of the country in Costa Rica, um, really beautiful surroundings and settings. And something we had kind of discovered on our way was that um, Starbucks has actually made a kind of cool coffee shop hacienda farm thing on the outskirts of San Jose. I know some people are really uh, not huge fans of Starbucks. I think something that's interesting, though, is when companies are investing in kind of creating unique things and experiences. And so I think um, finding something like that that is unique it is cool for us and we do enjoy checking it out. And so uh, it's hard to convey what, what this place is like if you don't look at a photo, but what it is is um, kind of their headquarters for their farming operations in Costa Rica. They've also built a really big, um, interesting cafe that's kind of open to the whole hacienda. So it kind of overlooks over the hill coffee plants and it's big and open air. Um, and you can do coffee touring experiences there. Just go get a drink. And so we, we stopped, had a drink, enjoyed some beautiful views over the coffee farms and then continued on our way before dropping off our car in San Jose where we spent our two final nights and we'll put the links to all the stuff we mentioned in the show notes. But for anyone who's interested, that place is called Starbucks Hacienda Alsacia. Yeah. And like Ryan mentioned, the interior was really stunning. We loved our time in the interior of Costa Rica and everywhere we drove was just really beautiful. I think something that a lot of people don't realize is that San Jose is actually kind of located in a mountain valley. And so the whole city is surrounded by mountains and the city's not super big and doesn't have a ton of skyscrapers or anything. So as you drive in, you're like, oh, this is a capital city, or at least that was kind of my thoughts and feelings because I'm so used to, you know, cities like Panama City being the capital city or Mexico City. They're big. They've got a lot of buildings. There's a lot of concrete. There's a lot of action happening. And San Jose definitely didn't look or feel like that. And it's kind of interesting because pretty much everyone we talked to said, skip San Jose, don't visit there, fly in and out of the airport if you have to, and, you know, don't give it any more time. And, Just with the way our flights worked out, with the flight times and knowing that we were coming in by car and we had to drop off our rental car, we just felt like, okay, we're going to have to spend at least one night here. Why don't we spend two and give ourselves one full day here? And I think we actually had like a day and a half because of the way that our flight ended up working out from Costa Rica to Panama City. But I'm really glad that we spent, you know, a day in San Jose and got to have a little feel for it. Yeah, and San Jose is an interesting town. You mentioned it's kind of 
it's not it's not the biggest city. There there are some tall buildings, a lot of activity, a lot of people living there. And when you kind of go into the main walking street, there's quite a bit of buzz and activity. And so on our day there, we we tried to go to a market, which turned out to be closed on the day that we were going there. And then we were kind of wondering, like, there seems to be a lot of, like, livestock wandering the streets here. What's going on? Uh, and walked a couple streets down, and there was actually a big livestock parade. Um, uh, lots of, apparently, the event is farmers from kind of all over the region come and is kind of part of the celebration parade there, the kind of prized livestock down the street. So it's kind of a fascinating experience as this... Um, you know, modern capital city has been taken over by cows and oxen and, and all types of things. And so we walked by that for a while and then looped around to kind of the main area where there is a, a large um, museum that covers a lot of the history of Costa Rica. Yeah, and we checked out the National Theater and just kind of some of the more important buildings in San Jose. And we just kind of walked around and just took in the sights, the sounds, and just enjoyed the city. And it was, yeah, it was a nice experience. We ended up staying at the Salina. So the Salina is downtown San Jose, so a little bit away from the airport because the airport's actually kind of outside of the city center. And that was a really, really great option to stay at. Our room was really nice. The space was really nice. And they actually have a bar and a restaurant there. So if you're just spending like a night or two in transit, it's really great because you've got your food and everything right there at the... I guess, hostel slash hotel. But we also found one other restaurant that we really enjoyed called Cafe Rojo. It was kind of like a fusion Asian restaurant. It had a really cool vibe. The food was really yummy. The decor was nice. And I think that if you went to visit San Jose and you did what we did and stayed at Selena and you visited a place like Cafe Rojo and you walked down the main street, you might wonder why San Jose kind of gets a bad rap from tourists because it was a nice experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, a good city to check out. And I think we mentioned in the other episode, talking to a lot of people, because the airport's outside, because people are looking for you know beach stuff, a lot of people go airport out come right back into the airport and leave. So um, it is a little bit of an adventure to go into the city of San Jose. But like you mentioned, I think I think worth checking out if you're on a trip um, just to Costa Rica. And I think also if you like cities, <laughs> I think that it's really cool to see, you know, the capital city of a major nation that has some of the, you know, get some of the most tourists probably, you know, in the world. For sure. Yeah. And so you mentioned we stayed at the Salina. If you've traveled in Central America, Latin America, or even maybe even Europe recently, um, you've probably seen or heard about Salina. They are um, kind of a hostel, almost boutique hotel, co-working space thing. Don't want to spend too much time belaboring it, but growing really popular and kind of interesting for people who are digital nomads, people who are, are younger and looking to travel and be more social. And so we mentioned that there are a couple around um, Costa Rica we kind of found price-wise that it made more sense for us to stay in Airbnbs in a lot of the other cities, just like it was like comparable prices to, to get a room or get an Airbnb. And so we thought, okay, makes more sense to, to do that. Um, and a couple of times we went and worked at their co-working spaces in other cities. But then San Jose, for us, our thinking was, that's a city where if we're staying in an Airbnb, maybe we don't feel like super you know, comfortable going out and doing a lot of stuff seems like it would be more, you know, more advantageous to be in a spot where we might meet some other people, get more access to like touristic resources, tours, that types of thing. Uh, and so we decided to do it in San Jose and the prices also were more comparable. So that's why we did it in San Jose, but definitely something to check out if you're going to Costa Rica. selena has got some good um, options around, especially if you're solo traveling as a, a way to meet people, or especially if you're working as a way to have a, a solid space with good internet. Yeah, absolutely. We worked at the co-working space in Santa Teresa and La Fortuna, and they were both beautiful spaces, super welcoming people and great options for the digital nomads out there traveling through Costa Rica because the, the internet other places is not always so reliable. And so that pretty much concludes our time in Costa Rica, the three weeks that we had in total to explore. And we're going to spend the rest of this episode just talking a little bit about our overall impressions, thoughts, feelings, and all that good stuff. So I'll start by saying that the nature in Costa Rica definitely lived up to all the things I had heard about it. What, what did you think about that? 
Yeah, definitely a beautiful, beautiful country that is compact enough that you can, you know, travel around and, and do lots of stuff. I think that, you know, that time we spent in Monteverde and some of the stuff we did in La Fortuna are what really stands out to me looking back. And then some of those sunsets in Nosara, just sitting on the beach and enjoying those. Those are kind of my three things that stand out the most to me. Yeah, I think that I would second that as well. I loved the sunsets in Nusara. I loved the Airbnb in Monteverde. And what was your third one? Uh, just activities in, in La Fortuna as well. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, the waterfall and the hiking and just being able to get outside was really, really awesome. So I would have pretty much the same highlights as you. What would you say were some of your like low lights or your cons with Costa Rica? Yeah, you definitely wouldn't call it a low light. I think it's just the trade-off that exists there. So kind of what you get when you travel to Costa Rica is a place that is more developed when it comes to tourism. So in comparison to Nicaragua or even in Panama, um, the tourist industry is more developed. There's way more tourist arrivals and you get charged more for tourist activities lots of places you show up and it's like five dollars for locals twenty dollars if you're a foreigner um they've kind of developed that system for tourism and that comes with pros like lots of activities cloud forest stuff parks hanging bridges all that stuff which is cool um but it comes with the price so for me i think just kind of it's not really a, a low light but it's a a kind of re recognize just recognizing the fact that um, Costa Rica is a spot where a lot of people go. And so what you get with that is more options. Um, you get more opportunities to, to go different places because it's more developed. You get, I think, more, more safety, more security. If you're a solo traveler, you probably feel more safe there than some of the neighboring countries. Um, the trade-off is that it's definitely going to take a bigger hit to your budget. We kind of found that prices in Costa Rica, just traveling around, eating out a couple times a day, it was similar to you know, similar to prices in the States, really. Um, you, there's ways you can kind of find cheaper options, but for the most part, it's not really like a, a budget um, trip. And so I think for me, it, what we, we've been talking to friends about it. I think for me, it really stands out as the type of place that I think is a great place to go if you're like if you're going on like a two week vacation to Central America and you don't speak a ton of Spanish, I think Costa Rica is an amazing place uh, to go for that. If you're someone who's like, hey, I've got five grand and I'm trying to travel in Latin America for four months, I don't think Costa Rica is the place. I think you can make that money go a lot longer other places. And if you're a more adventurous type of person, you can kind of find better you know, find cheaper things, maybe not better value things, but definitely make your money last longer in other places. But it does come with a bit of a, a security difference, a bit of a development difference, and just an overall bit of probably like cra craziness that comes from being in places that haven't had that experience with tourism where um, Costa Rica can, can make you really feel comfortable as an English speaker. Yeah, absolutely. We encountered so much more English speaking there than we have in a lot of other countries that we've spent time in. And yeah, just a lot more, I guess, development with tourist activities. Like if you guys remember back to our episode on Oaxaca from Mexico, we talked about Yerbe al Agua, and that is one of two petrified waterfalls in the world. And you know, there's not a ton of tourism that's developed around that. That same thing in Costa Rica would have tours running from like every tourist company, essentially, and they'd be running all day, every day, and maybe for a little bit of a higher price. So it just gives you kind of a, a, an idea of how things are sort of different between, you know, I guess those two, two countries specifically. But I do feel like Costa Rica, outside of the cost of it, I feel like I understand why it's popular. I mean, it is very beautiful there. There is tons of stuff to do. I feel like it's got a good balance for lots of different people. Like you can go and you can get a beach vacation and you can also like visit a national park and see wildlife. You can go, you know, do a more extreme adventure. You know, there's kind of a lot of different stuff for everybody there. And we only touched on a couple of different 
parts of Costa Rica, there are tons more places that are popular with tourists. One of the places that's still on my list that I'd really love to visit is Manuel Antonio. We haven't even been to the east coast of Costa Rica. And if you look on a map, we actually stayed pretty north in the country considering like how far down it can get. Uh, Puerto Viejo is on kind of the southeast tip. It is really close to Bocas del Toro in Panama. That's a really popular spot. So there's lots more stuff to do in Costa Rica. And I think that that's one of the reasons that people love it. Like you can go through, you know, from north to south and there's just endless amounts of activities. And we definitely felt that like in all the places we went, there was tons of cool stuff to do, lots of cool stuff to see. And most of it was nature, which was really amazing and really refreshing. All right. So yeah, I think that that summarizes a lot of our, our thoughts and experiences in Costa Rica. We'll make sure that the links for the places we liked and our recommendations go up on our show notes at theworldwanderers.com. If you are planning a trip to Costa Rica and have any further questions that didn't get answered in this episode, um, join our Facebook group on Facebook. Just search for World Wanderers, a community for travelers, and post your question in there. And um, not only us, but other people will be able to answer your question. Or you, you can always email us at info at theworldwanderers.com. If you're interested in learning more about digital nomad life, you can join the community on Patreon at patreon.com slash theworldwanderers and get access to the World Wanderers Insider, where we are interviewing all types of nomads, including ourselves, about how we've made that work. Um, coming up or out right now, our newest one is with... Daniel and Annette from Chase for Adventure talking about their journey from kind of working in more city careers back at home to taking off, living as nomads in Asia, building up a YouTube channel and trying to make a career as YouTubers work. They have a fascinating story, which you can find as well in one of our older episodes. But this episode on the World Wanderers Insider really focuses in on the business side of how they're approaching that. So I think you'd really find it interesting. So once again, that's patreon.com slash the world wanderers. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next week. Until next time. To find more information, relevant links, and photos talked about in this week's episode, check out theworldwanderers.com. If you have a question, comment, or feedback, send us an email at info at theworldwanderers.com. Join our community on Facebook at The World Wanderers or on Twitter at worldwanderers1. As always, thanks so much for listening. Have a great day. Bye.